Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, the uh, the 13th, I hate that, of January 2014. How you doing all? Did you have a good weekend? Get some rest? Hey, Petra. I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. I have a, a new uh, workout routine, and uh, Joey's beating the hell out of me. I'm uh, doing, think of the Frankenstein walk, but backwards with 50-pound chains on each leg. Each leg. And just to hold on to your hand so you don't fall over. It was pretty funny. <laughs> so, um, I'm getting somewhere. Not sure where, but getting somewhere. That Joey, he's fun, huh? Anyway, um, admin, admin, admin. I'm kind of shocked about the lack of people that are taking me up on sending me their trades, but um, I don't know. Maybe you guys are embarrassed. I don't think you understand. You understand what you're being offered. But you know what? A couple, you not a couple years from now, you will, and uh, the opportunity won't be available. So anyway, your choice. We're gonna do something today. Um, you guys are fascinated with my scant. I mean, I don't have. The, I haven't given out that many stories of boom boom. Um, you know what? Let me change glasses. One second. Let's go with those. Okay. All right. And um, I was thinking this uh, when I was down to Tucson. The truth is. If you can see it, no, no, BJ, I was talking about last year's trades. Um, I offered everybody if they sent me all their trades from last year, especially if they had uh, stop, their, they knew where their initial stops were and their targets. Uh, we would do the same analysis that Commodities Corporation would do on your account uh, anonymously. We're trying to put together a database of all the people at Market Geometry and see if we can get a feel for where people are at. But, hey, if you're not, uh, if you guys are not trading right now because you're doing something at the warehouse, you're making the right decision, no doubt about it. you got to be uh, ready, to, ready to rock and roll to step in. All right, so I would maintain that if you can see it, We'll describe it. Whether it's because you hear it, whether it's because you feel it, or whether because you actually can see it uh, in front of you before it happens, or on the chart as it happens, you can trade it. Would you disagree with that? Now, When you try and trade it, of course, you will have to put parameters around it, or you will lose money. What if you see it late? Well, you keep seeing it till you get better, Igsha. What if you see it too early, Igsha? Quite, quite literally, what if you see it too early? You have to put parameters around it. If you see it too early, you'll have to learn to have patience. Yep. If you see it too late, you'll have to learn the same thing, which is, okay, I see it, and I realize I see it too late. So I'll have patience, and another opportunity will come along, and I'll see it then. And eventually, I'll see it correctly. I'm going to go slow for a second while I... Where somebody came into my office and put two fingerprints on my glasses while I was sleeping, I swear. Which, of course, isn't true, but 
So today, I don't remember this is November, I think it was November, when y'all asked me, can we do some of the, some of these things, but do them on, you know, less freaky charts, and uh, let's do some simple repeatable things like test and retest instead of just frequency. Remember all that? And I pretty much I've tried to stay with that, right? What the hell? Pardon me, I'm playing with my glasses, which is an endless an endless fight since I've had my, my cataracts done. I don't know what that is. But I don't like it. Oh, maybe that's it. Um, so anyway, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of the year. You like the Beckett quote? Yeah. I don't even know where I found it, Rebecca, but I liked it, and I thought it's apropos for the new year. Sometimes you've got to just get in there and make it happen. And so. I'm talking to uh, Michael, who owns the Greybeards. And I told him, on some of these intraday trades, pardon me, um, even though I may see something coming up on a tick chart, don't get freaked out because, because I may switch to a time-based chart. So that you guys can go, oh, okay. But that comes with a caveat. I don't always use time-based charts the same way everybody else does. So we've traded natural gas with 189 ticks, right? A lot of people say, I don't have tick charts or my tick charts don't match yours, etc., right? Okay, I can deal with that. But you're going to have to take a couple extra steps. This is a 10-minute natural gas chart. 10 minute. In a natural gas you never have to worry about you can you can collect month individual months and I do but right now especially with the price this low and interest rates this low the front month it's the same so front month the front month the front month continuous is the same basically you can you can chart it either way all right everybody with me Okay, so now I can look at a tick chart and it'll look more continuous. And I can look at a 10 minute chart and it'll, it'll look continuous as well. What will I have on the 10 minute chart? That I don't have on the tick chart. Overnight distortion. Yeah just flat flat line right follow me do I need to do I need do I need to pull something up I will if you need if you if you don't understand tell me now and I'll pull some pull up pull up something and show you what overnight distortion looks like okay I don't say I, I there's nobody here that doesn't understand all right now watch what I did to my data are you paying attention closely? You can do this in, I know you can do it in Ensign. I know you can do it in eSignal. I know you can do it in TradeStation. I know you can do it in NeoTicker. I haven't checked in um, Ninja or MetaTrader, but I bet you can. So, data properties. Symbol. I sync with the Eastern Time Zone. Normally, it opens at 5 o'clock in the morning. You with me? 
if you're if you're show if you're showing it 24 hours a day I click day session only and I change it from 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock I don't want to see the first crappy hour that they're showing me that you know, the people aren't awake yet the New Yorkers are getting the phone call or are in the office at 6 o'clock not 5 o'clock okay so the 5 o'clock 5 to 6 is useless data to me similarly after about 3.15 in the afternoon it's crap okay but that's the normal setting they have a little smoke break in there okay everybody with me now if I chart like this what am I going to get between 6 o'clock, uh, sorry, um, f 5 o'clock in the afternoon, 6 o'clock in the afternoon, sorry, 18, and 6 in the morning? What am I going to get? I'm going to get gaps, and most of the time, and lots of them, right? If that bothers you, You could try this and leave the night session in. And you can probably still find frequency, but it really is sloppy and ugly looking. And I trade E mini S and P's like this. And have another a way of looking between meaningful close and open. Well, I trade E mini S and P's. I changed the close from three o'clock to three o'clock from three fifteen because cash closes at three o'clock and the rest of it is just fist fighting trying to cover their E mini S and P positions based on the cash market. And I only trade the day session. Okay? So I trade thirteen minute bars if I'm gonna trade time bars. Because eight thirty to three o'clock is three hundred and ninety minutes. Everybody follow that? I've been doing that forever. I've showed it a number of times, but you know what? Nobody ever follows me. That's okay with me. I don't do it to try and get ahead. Somebody has said to me, are you trying to get ahead of the market 13 minutes instead of 15 minutes? No. It's 390 minutes. I want it to be. I don't want anything hanging over. If I was doing 8.30 to 3.15, that's 405 minutes, and I'd look at 15-minute bars, right? Because that divides evenly. That, that's all. So you get to see the real thrust of the market more clearly. No, it's not that I, there's no real thrust or anything, John. It's in, in I'm talking about E-mini S&Ps. In E-mini S&Ps, the majority, whether you like it or not, the majority of the moves are related to cash stocks. Just one second, Bob. Bob, I can't think about six things at once. The majority of volume is related to cash stocks and the majority of large blocks of stocks trade between 8:30 Chicago time and 3 o'clock in the afternoon Chicago time and then you can translate that back to Eastern time one hour earlier okay your close is shown on properties is 515 Eastern uh, I left the I left the closes alone, Bob. Okay. I did, I just all I did was I truncated the opening. So whatever whatever the hell there's see they have this little smoke break. See this? Seventeen to eight, seven fifteen to eight. I don't know. I guess they. I don't know what they do. I don't know if they go have vodka or what, but and they deserve it. But they have a smoke break, so I left it the same. That's fine. Um, okay. Wait a second. What do you mean cash stocks? Okay. Rebecca, when you trade Facebook, you know what that is? Rebecca? If you buy Facebook or sell stocks, right? Those are cash stocks. We're talking about the stock market now. The majority of the volume that goes through, like 90% of cash stock volume goes through between 8 eight thirty Chicago time I guess it would be 7 30 New York time and and 2 o'clock 
New York time or 3 o'clock Chicago time. That's the cash close. You've seen them on the news where they ring the bell. Cash flow of buyers and sellers. Yes. The majority of the volume of the cash market. How about that? I say it that way? That sound better? People that need to buy a million shares of Facebook or whatever, they do it between 8.30 and 3 o'clock Chicago time. But they just do. That's the cash open and close. They actually leave, even though the market may be trading earlier and they might have an edge, they leave their orders market on open and market on close. I don't know why. That's one of the weird parts of the market that hasn't changed. That's why the New York Stock Exchange the New York, and the NASDAQ still exist, I guess. The guys are standing on the floor and fill orders. But anyway, this is the same technique. All we're saying is, let's take out all the overnight dead space. Okay? And there's a little bit of art in there. Shane says, sorry if this is a dumb question, but 390 minutes is also evenly divided by 15-minute bars. Um, it is. Wouldn't be the last time I was wrong, but wait a second, I gotta move this. There we go. Yeah, I guess it would be. I I don't I, okay. What I like to do. To be honest with you, Shane, is I do trade thirteens, but most of the time I trade thirty nine thirteens a little fast to me, but. Um, I just like the frequency of 13, that's all. It's no no special reason. 15 would be okay. I didn't even pay attention to it. You could do 15 minutes, okay? I mean, this actually, I actually don't even, I, I tried to make this easy. It's not actually 10, 11-ish, but it's it's not equal There's, there's no art here. I mean, we could we, we could do more work on this and find a better amount of minutes. I can tell you, Shane, that I like 13s and 39s and 89s, but from from experience. But there's no real art. I mean, there's no real science. It's all art. Other than the one of the majority of stocks traded. Well, after, after 3 o'clock, it's people just squaring up their S&P positions. So, and that's a really minor part of the market still. Even though the S&P dominates in volume, it has nothing to do with stock. All right, so we've taken the overnight out here. Everybody see that? Everybody understand why I do it? Any questions? So everybody's scratching their head wondering if I'm crazy. Okay. All right. Now, I looked at this on a tick chart to start out with, and then I thought, well, you guys have requested time-based charts. Is it tradable on a time-based chart? Yes, it is. So long before I got anywhere near this thing unfolding I switched to time-based charts and of course the graybeard said what the hell are you doing there's no overnight in here and I I went through the whole thing I said it's like stocks and they went oh okay got that I know that I get that what about the after-hour traders how much do they actually affect the market hey dr. Gary how are you buddy you feeling better he's alive nice to see you buddy and I'll also see you in about two and a half hours. Good. Um, overnight, in natural gas, uh, overnight guys uh, really don't affect the market. I think there'll come a time when they do because Europe is trying to break away. Right now, Europe's natural gas basically comes from Russia, and they're locked into long-term commitments, so they're um, 
<clears throat> free market trades don't happen very much. They don't have much impact on the market. But they're breaking away as fast as they can. So there will come a time. And they're also starting to buy from Oman and some other people in the United States. So there will come a time when their free market um, trades like this will make quite a difference. But at the moment, um, over the overnight volume, I think Gary's having some problems here. At the moment, I think some um, the overnights have very little. So we're in this nice multi-day uptrend everybody see it doc you back I'm excited man. my buddy I mean I couldn't quite walk to walk, walk to Gary's house but that's only because I'm not quite up to health but he's up on Copper Mountain I, I can see him out the window okay let's see what we get out of this So flattens out. Okay, well, you know what, Gary? It's not unusual. Go to go to webinar. It's kind of funky. So recordings are a good thing. Um, some days some people have trouble. Some days other people have trouble. Some days nobody has trouble. So hopefully you won't have any trouble, and we'll see. All right. So it's starting to flatten out. I've already. I'm already. Oh, good. You can hear me now. Okay, good. Um, I'm already looking on tick based and then I backed up and thought you know what I, let me do this on time based because that's what everybody wants but to do that I have to take out the overnight all right so here's what I want to see I want to see range extension up or down I need to find some frequency if I don't have frequency then I can't be able, I won't be able to see it or feel it or taste it or touch it whatever it is that gets me in touch with the market right then as we saw in the Canada trade last week and this was by the way this is almost at the same time the Canada trade although you'll see that I actually have to pass control after I set it up to the graybeards because we're in session but that's a different story I actually want to see orderliness once I see frequency, once I see range extension, I actually want to see orderliness disappear. Why would that be? Anybody? I want volatility to pick up. Yep. Let's see if I can move this. There we go. I want volatility to pick up and... Look at the next one number. Should be should be two. It should be six. Pardon me while I renumber this. Oy. Never do this when you're tired. There we go. I want someone to get hurt. I want fist fighting. I want to see pain. I want to see give up, right? This is actually as much as many characters as I can type in this little box unfortunately or I would have said again and then I want to see frequency again reassert itself again because then I want to test and retest and then I'll be looking for an entry right follow me so just like last week I got my shopping list in front of me already And that allows me to actually be, if if some of this starts to happen, that allows me to, what, actually be ahead of the market by three, four, or five steps if some of it starts to happen. Because if this, then that, then this, then that, then this. Follow me? Remember how it worked in Canada? So you're waiting for the wash, so to speak, then get in on risk? Yeah, I'm... That's an that's an example. Yeah, well, it might not be a wash, but something. Yeah, I'm looking for ugly, and then I'm looking for frequency to reassert itself. Is that the order in which it has to happen? Hmm. 
It's possible that, I'll, that I could find frequency after orderliness disappears and somebody gets hurt, right? But frequency definitely has to happen before I get the test and retest. And I definitely have to see pain and orderliness disappear. Can anybody tell me why? Before I want to get interested. Remember, it's the new year. Even though it says the 23rd, we're not going to look until after the new year. Why would I why would I want orderliness and to disappear and pain to happen? Your explanation of range extension of flowering in Friday's midday's class is very useful when one could see them contrasted. Well we can see the same thing. Are there some clues to how far the wash hang on? will test the gap and how much of uh, the test of the gap may tip a hand that is not a wash. Uh, it depends on the market, Gary. Let's see how this one unfolds. This is going to be a wild, wild west one. Psychological positioning, it's partly that. What else? That's, that. no offense, to see some serious commitments, it's actually the opposite, John. I want some serious commitments, and I want them broken. Shane, you're close. Shake the market up. What? It's something else. What else do I want? I actually want the lack of something. The lack of what? Yep, I want to make space. That's right. And what else? Confusion, right? I want people that are have complacency to get wiped out. What else? There's one thing we're missing. It's related to space. So that New Year mentality is significant? Not necessarily. I want everybody out of their positions. That's right. I want the deck clear. Then the market's free to do its thing. Okay? And especially if we either have frequency or can find frequency at that point, the frequency will assert itself, not the positions. Follow me? I want. I don't want anybody defending positions. I don't want everybody, you know, uh, just smugly holding on to their positions. I want them out. Goodbye. It's not. It's not a New Year thing, but it, it's easier in the New Year because there's less players. So as I as I said last week, it's like a chess game. If there's only five of us, it's a hell of a lot easier to do this if there's five of us or ten of us or twenty of us. When it gets to a million of us, a little more difficult. Although, for the most part, the market is sheep, even though sheep can make money. So maybe there's only 10 groups, but at the beginning of the year, it's a little easier. There's few, fewer players, especially big players. All right, so let's see what we get out of this. So we start to round off at the top. I haven't seen this one started around and stopped and then gapped higher. Now we're starting to round off during the day. We'll see what we get. What do you think? Oh, here's our pullback. Well, as we close off that high, this either has to be frequency and a maximum excursion line, or it's crap. Does that make sense? This is our first pullback. So it's one or the other. So let's extend it out. Would you draw it in so early? Um, well, actually, here, I'd probably draw it in there. Sometimes things don't appear when I want them to, Ixion. I'm off by a bar. And you can see, we haven't closed for the day. It's doing pretty good as a maximum excursion line, don't you think, Isha? I mean, at least people are staying away from it. How about that? All right, so now we're getting to Christmas. Things are thinning out. 
Now it's looking real good. Uh, well, that's okay with me. It, it, it may be, Ikshan, what did I say last week? This may be absolute crap, right? We'll find out. You put it on the chart, and you see what the chart brings you. That's all you can do. I'm not. I'm nowhere near ready to trade. I'm actually stalking this. I hang on. You. I. You know what? I didn't bother to make this so the gray line shows up later. If you want me to, I will. But um, it, this is after I. Okay. I didn't stalk this until the fourth and fifth of January. We're long a ways away from there, so I left the ranges in because I ran out of time this morning. So it's Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas. Of course, would you really expect that we're going to make huge moves? Now, it's interesting. Actually, we've gotten more volatility than we had here. I don't know why the 23rd was so quiet. But <clears throat> and we gap higher on the day after Christmas. See it? Apparently, there was some Black Friday buying. But that didn't work so well. But now we're above the frequency. So Ixon says, is this line any good? Apparently not, Ixon said. I say, well, it probably is not. But there's only one other thing that could make it good. And what would that be? That it becomes a center line. Does that make any sense? If it's a center line, this is our first reaction. Yeah, now we're back on the back side, right? This is our first react, sort of a mid shift AC until broken. Yeah. So if we're on the center, this is if this is a center line, here's our reaction. We can throw an action out in a minute here when we have space to do it, right? And somewhere in here, we're going to find out whether or not this is meaningful or meaningless. But we're far from trading anyway. Again, it's going to be the 5th or 6th. We're going to be looking at it the 4th or 5th. Trading isn't even open for me until the 6th of January. So we're not even at the New Year's. But right now we're doing our pre-mortem. How about that? And we got so we've got this range. And all I did here, I just extended the range. I took this slope, put it the reaction line. And I'll throw, I'll throw the other side up here in a minute. And we're dancing around in kind of a double the range situation. See it? See the double the range? It's not perfect, but to the tick. But I'm using the market structure. I'm not just I'm not using the parallels like Shane does. I'm just using the market structure. And can you see what I'm doing here? What do I have going? We ran down, we gapped tire, we're running down again. What is this? One, yeah, three drives at the top. I know you're presently watching. With the big gap through, isn't the application? Okay, remember, I'm not presently watching. This is actually, Gary, I'm, it's the 4th and 5th. It's a weekend of the 4th and 5th of January, uh, January. I'm going back and looking at days trying to get the rhythm. I don't know what this gap is at this point. I'm watching, and I see, even though it gaps higher, where does it gap to this high and then fails immediately? All of these rallies have failed. These, these gaps are caused because we took, off, took out the overnight. So it would have looked like um, a rally and then a failed rally. But we took out the overnight because people wanted ten time-based bars, 10-minute, not tick bars. So I'm, will, I'm willing to try it, see if it works. I know it works on tick bars. Let's see if it works on time bars, okay? And we expect a lot of gaps. There's going to be gaps almost every day, if not every day. Just the, the nature of this market especially. You know, if we did soy meal, you'd see, you'd see the same thing. If we went to 10-minute soy meal, day only. All right, so yeah, these are second drives to the bottom. So 
you should be thinking in your toolbox sometimes these drives on the upside and the downside help you orient where you are they're not really for entries and exits I'll say it again they're not really for entries and exits because we're not breakout buyers or sellers but they orient us and say okay I got three drives to the bottom the third one better hold or I got three drives to the top the third one better hold or that I know something right and you know keep in mind our list here I'll keep dragging it with us so right now it's pretty orderly right it's just it's as orderly as it was on the way up it's just kind of rolling its way down but it is doing something we're seeing range extension now have I found frequency we don't really know yet is there any clue to intent if the three drives has a slant up or down uh, that is an uptrending three drives well uh, Gary last week last week we talked about it generally the farmers in the 30s in Nebraska that developed this um, the advanced section that most people have never read talks about generally if you've got three drives to the bottom you've also got three drives to the top and what they like is just whichever one gives up they think that's the likely trend um, it doesn't I like them when they're slanted but I don't I don't always get what I like and let's look let's look at the we're going to get a pair let's look at the two and let's see if there's a slant on the two how about that is the list of requirements generic or specific to this chart um, I don't know John um, this is the same list I had for Canada right let's see I mean you know what for my next trade let's see if I feel the same thing um, maybe this isn't something internal that I brought up in the Canada trade and uh, the can you're gonna see the Canada trade in this were at, at about the same time and I was uh, I had some angst about trading at New Year's after having such a good year um, but we've talked about this I do like to see pain I like to see frequency I like to see range extension and then flowering and easy entries are tests and retests so um, it's fairly generic but let, let's see I'll try and remember to look at this as trades come up it's a good question so pretty orderly looking we do have range extension but pretty orderly looking okay as we get up here this is the question we should be asking ourselves what are the positions long or flat don't you think but is this a range or is this likely to bust out that one's more difficult to answer probably until we see a few more bars we'd buy a bar right which is why I moved like I said things are popping up this morning where they shouldn't pop out yet but okay now what do you think doesn't look like it's headed it doesn't look like it's headed to the upside does it it looks like it's a range at best so I don't think this is a bad place you see if I can get someone get this one to pop up correctly next time at best sideways don't you think I, I I'd agree right people got long they got to the top they're seeing their profits erode they're starting to sell right make sense okay nice back at the center oh and by the way action 
center line reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. We're going to find out now if this is meaningful frequency, Ikshan. See what I did? I could throw it away, but that's what I got at the moment, so I'm going to hold on to it. Also, as I look at it now as a center line, let's look at it. Obviously works here. We gap and then run below. Action, reaction, not bad. Cuts nice here. Doesn't suck. It's okay with me. It's not the worst thing I've ever drawn. And the day's not, you know, trade's not over yet. We'll see what happens to it. Climbing back up, but making lower highs. Gap lower. Again, the gaps are because we've taken out the overnight market. So it actually traded lower. Okay? Do you think this is pain? Again, it traded lower. I think we're still in the range. This ain't pain yet. If, well, it depends on where you're long. What if you're long here, John? You're not happy, but you're not in pain. If you're long up here, of course, you're in pain, but you're also stupid. If you're going to range trade, we want to range trade down here, right? Or we want to sell up here. We don't want to trade in here. But, of course, lots of people do trade in here. And yeah, they'd be in pain. So this actually doesn't gap down. It trades down. And here's our action, reaction. Now we can see the two slope lines. So let's extend them. Let's just keep this idea going until we don't like them anymore. All right. We got to find the pain. Because if it's going to trade in here, I don't want to trade. I have no edge in here. If it trades in here, then I probably have a whale trading here and, and unloading them here. And in natural gas, you know, if he's a long-term whale, I, I got no edge. It's a big enough range, but I, I really don't have an edge. So I, I don't want to trade in a range. Okay, so I want, I, I want it to clear out or I don't want to play. Does that make sense? Hang on, we lost our list. Okay. Do, 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 do. Gap, there we go. So, um, well, I lost our list anyway. So unless we are not playing in this range, if we're playing in this range, I'm just not interested. Now, no action, reaction, Take a look. The top of this range is already at the action sloped line. Do you see that? And you guys know I love tested horizontal lines that run into sloped lines, don't I? It's one of my favorite places to trade or to show me the prices run out of energy. So I can see that I'm salivating. I don't know that I'm going to get it, but I see it. So now we're back at the center line. And you can see it's mighty thin. This is actually, it's trading on the Friday after Christmas. And you can see, basically, or would this be Monday? Hang on a second. 12.27. No, it'd be Friday. Okay, so you can see this is the last bid. They hit the bid. Somebody bids here and gets hit. It's a runaway gap type, type, type trading. It's not that they're gapping. It's that this is the last trade. This is the next trade. You understand me? This is the overnight. This is just... Ow. 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 Can you, can you start to see the pain? Somebody wants to sell, but 
yeah, nice follow through, and they can't actually trade where they want to trade. They have to trade lower. Extremely thin trading, and someone is getting hurt. Well, yeah, there's there's people that are playing that shouldn't be playing. That's what I think. We're trying to break through the bottom of this range, and it's just thin. And uh, now it's getting ugly. Don't you think? All these people that are long here and tried to hold on. Remember we talked about this uh, last week. End of the year, they're going to try and hold on. They don't want to take a loss at the end of the year. Come on, don't make me take a loss. I'm going to get my bonus based on this. Or the beginning of the year. I don't want to start out the year with a loss. But they're being forced to, aren't they? Yeah, the air is turning blue with swearing. Ow, ow, mirror bars. If there was ever a time, if you were smart in charting and trying to hold on to a long, if there was ever a time you did not want to see mirror bars, don't you think this is it? Even though the second one closes higher. Because these say and mean one thing. Okay. Prior lows taken out. So any rally to the top of the range potential short? Um, yeah, I think so. Boy, if I if I got a if I got a two bar rally to right here, I'd be short. How about you guys? If I had a stop, gotta have a stop. I'd do a test and retest probably this time of the year, but gotta have a stop. But yeah, I, Al, that's what I'm thinking. Damn, we get up there. Let me in. But it's a long ways away right now, isn't it? And also, it's Friday, December 27th. I'm, and I, I'm again, I'm doing this bar by bar. But but isn't that similar to the card trade if price moves back quickly? Oh, the CAD trade? Uh, you mean taking profits, Shane? Yeah, I get it. I'm not, I understand what part of the Canada trade you're talking about. I well, I don't know. I maybe I don't remember it well, but let me let me just explain this to you. I've got a range, it's clearly been defined. We've broken out to the bottom. If we get back up here and I have a stop, I'm gonna do a test and retest. If I then have a stop, I'll get short up here. Remember, I'm not watching this bar by bar live. At the at this point, I'm doing pre-trading bar by bar to try and get a feel for this market. Okay. But I showed you one I want to see. I'm I'm looking for. I'm looking for a setup here. I'm looking for some people to get burned. And I'm looking that for then once the deck is clear for some frequency. Okay. Don't try and cook, don't make this mistake. Don't try and cookie cutter every situation and everything I say out of context and tape it on in the middle of something, okay? And Shane and I were talking about this yesterday. Uh, we're going to start spanking you guys for this. You know, somebody in IB said, you said on the 13th or whatever that if this bar, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you cannot take things out of context, Okay. These are not mathematical equa equa uh, read this a second. We're not these are not mathematical equations. You can't take things out of context and then try and apply them. It doesn't work that way. The confidence of a short at the intersection of lines is it because the third drive down didn't hold, so that is intent. Well we we haven't we don't have the third drive down yet, Gary. It's coming. This is something that has nothing to do with three drives. We, um 
in the breakfast session especially, we've seen a lot of times when price, when we have a tested horizontal line and a sloped uh, presentation, that as, if price slides into this area, it's a one, if you have a stop, it's a wonderful entry. If you have a stop, i got to say this over and over again, you have to have a stop, and I like to have a test and retest. Okay, uh, we don't use intent, the word intent here, Gary, in the breakfast. That's a midday thing. Okay, so the test, retest, the horizontal slope lines when you have a stop is critical. Yep, absolutely. I'm not just going to throw a position out there. Especially as ugly and thin as this stuff has become. So, if I, I don't care what my positions are. At this point, this is, uh, if I have a position, I'm going, uh-oh, and I'm, my, I'm putting my head under the desk. So you know what is about to hit the fan. I don't know if it's going to end up here, or end, I don't know where it's going to end up, but something's about to happen when I see these mirror bars. Okay? After tens of thousands of charts, I started to get it and came up with mirror bars. I said, you know, when you see these, it's a marker. And it generally, it's not even a great marker if you have a position. It's a, you better pay attention because things are about to get real ugly. So let's see what we get. We'll get a follow through the upside. We're coming to the bottom of the range we just broke out. Don't break through. Trying it again. Trying it again. Trying it again. Our center line's holding at the moment, so it's a trend barrier. Trying it again. Trying it again. Trying it again. Kind of turned it into a small range. It's prime time New York now, right? Should be no surprises. There should be plenty of volume. It's prime time New York. How about that for pain? Hello. If you were long trying to hold on, that pretty much says it all, doesn't it? Good old fashioned whooping. Good old-fashioned butt whipping. I think this is the third drive to the bottom. And biggest bar so far on the chart by far. Yep, absolutely. The deck should be clean at this point. Because not only did they run it down, but people got short and got caught. Right? At this point, I think, you know, people are going, God, I hope I don't have to trade the rest of the year because I've just given, long or short, I've just given away a lot of money. I just don't want to play. So I'm going to mark this as one, two, three drives. And Gary, you can actually see this one does have a slope. Uh, yeah, it's fine. This three drive to the bottom does have a slope. I guess we could extend it. But we'll just we'll just watch it. Now let's see what happens after they clear out the deck. When we get follow through, I mark out ML2. That makes sense. Looks like a major extreme to me. And I can already see ML3. I can see it coming. Can you see it coming? Where is it? Yeah. It, it's this red action line. My center line has worked pretty damn good. This is the reaction. Here's the action. Here's the slope. I think it's probably got something to do with this, don't you? You know, I built something. I wasn't exactly sure what I built. But now that we get to this part, it's starting to make sense. That, Andrew's guys was, that Andrew guy was pretty smart. And it's, flower, it's flowering, sure. All right, let's see what we get. Well, you leave a high. We're trying to bust down. We're back at the center line, testing the center line. Okay, we're heading lower, heading lower. Okay, what are the positions? This is what you should be asking yourself. 
Is this the new bottom of a range? Okay, Ixon says they're short. Ixon, is this a range? Yeah, we do. Just, you're right. We do just have a, have to wa buy a bar and watch. But what do you think? Well, what do you think? Make a guess. Make an uneducated guess. How about that? It just says it's not a range. Anybody else want to make a guess? Attempt at new low. Yeah, we're trying ML. Well, we're trying three drives, right? Let's see if it holds. I'd say everybody was short. I'd say we're pulling back up. People that are short are getting washed out. And testing it again. Historically, if that matters, price gaps and ranges. I guess I'd have to do a study, Gary, and say, remember, we're, we're forcing these gaps in there, right? These gaps aren't actually there. I would agree with you. But if I put the overnight data, I missed, you maybe missed the beginning. If I put the overnight data again, the, the, most of the gaps are not there. I took out the overnight sessions because I don't want the flat lines. All right. That minor formation looks like the USK in the beginning. Okay. All right. So now we're on the upside. How are we going to deal with this high? This is the high after the big wash, right? And I guess we should mark it as. Do you, you think this is a wash? Is that the correct, correct word for this? It may just be pain in a thin market. Having trouble with those tops. Whoop. Okay, if everybody was short down here, are they still short? We took out this gap high, which is, we forced the gap. It's a, it's a artificial gap, but we took out these highs. We took out this range high. Probably be some breakout buyers here, don't you think? One thing about breakout buyers, they never learn, ever. We saw that in the Canada. As we come up here, can you feel? You should be able to feel. People are getting, when we were down here, can you feel that people are leaning the wrong way? As you get up here, can you feel that people are leaning the wrong way? Yes, no. Yeah. It just hurt. How about that bar? I'll kind of measure it, but I guess it's it's even worse than this bar. Well, as we take out this high, Gary, these are breakout buyers that they just can't help themselves. They just cannot help themselves. It's beaten into them over and over. It's been beaten in them since they were a child. You know, you know how you see people. Without a map, you would be in a spin. Yep, that's right. Looks like a gray beard bar. The bulls got gelded. 
It's people chasing, yeah, it's people chasing price, Gary. Over and over and over. Go back and watch last week's Canada. It's the same thing, people chasing price. They're chasing their tails. So what are the positions? They're all long. Where did ML3 form? Right at our action line. You can see it. You should be able to smell it right here. I don't know how it's going to get there, but I can just smell that it's it's going to come over here. So I wanted frequency. I got my frequency. I wanted disorder, chaos. I wanted some people to get hurt. They got hurt on both sides now. Now the deck's clean. See it? Chihuahua. Now we all we have to do is be patient. Just be patient. This that and this is the hardest part. I I know most of you are going, boy, I wish I could see that. But okay, so here's ML1, here's ML2, here's ML3. Nothing magic about the points. Now we just have to be patient. We're not just looking for a retest. We're looking for it to make sense, Perry. Then we're looking for a retest, okay? Does this median line make any sense? Right? Well, we won't know until we see price react with it, Al. But yeah, I think it does. I mean, it, it's a forced median line. This is a perfect ML3. But will this, at, I mean, does this matter down here? Oh. We, we, need, we need price to inter interact with this baby first. And remember, we're doing historical bar by bar, so how about another bar? How about another bar of pain? Just in case you haven't had enough. How about that? How about that to start your new year? How'd you like to be that market maker? So is our media line crap? Yeah, not necessarily. Won't be the first time that I've had to do this. And we'll see if it helps, okay? Let's see what we get. So we've zoomed the median line. What do we expect? If we don't get a retest, I'm going to, of course, feel like maybe this median line isn't very good. I'll have to pay attention to the first warning line, but... You know, I'll kind of be, I may be licking my wounds going, maybe this media line's crap. Yee. Acceleration. So we zoomed and we're accelerating. Which is a sign of what? Not strength. It's not a weakness, right? And to get that gap out of the range... This was the range here, right here. See it? Double the range and take it down an o another third, so octaves. And now we've gapped out of it. It's made everybody reevaluate what they think of the market. They didn't think they were going to be down here. But they are down here, and now they're going to have to deal with it, right? So they're lost. When you see the positions get cleaned out like that, how many of the players, percentage-wise, do you think have been wiped out of the game and how many big players are left? The big players are left because this is what they do for a living. Now, the smart ones are like me, Rebecca. They're sitting on the sideline. I don't want no part of this yet. But the guys that are in the either in the pits or electronically that are whales, and this is what they do all day long, they're still in the game. They're not happy. And, um, you know, I there's several go-to people I have that, you know, because they're the whales in this market all day long, 
Now, when I decide to play, I'm as big as anybody, but I'm not in here day after day after day. But because they're the go-to guys, they want to see my business. They have to make me a price. As they sure as hell don't want me to deal somewhere else. They want to know what I'm doing. Just like, you know, the chimney in Canada. He wants to see my price. All of it. So let's see what happens. We zoomed and we look like we're going to zero, right? And by the way, our sloped one, two, three. What can we say about it? Our third drive? Yeah, it's gone, right? Anybody else? Yeah, it's gone. All right, so we don't think about four, five, six. It's over. That's over. That's so done. So yesterday, it's just busted, okay? So that gives us a feeling about the downside, right? Remember what I said? And you might, you might notice that I've snuck in one and two up here. We didn't talk about it. See me sneaking it in? One drive to the top, two drives to the top. See it? I'm expecting now, now that the bottom has gotten busted, I'm expecting a third drive, and I'm expecting it to hold. Otherwise, I've got chaos, and I've got expanding pivots, right? And, of course, at that point, I'm just going to turn the damn chart off. Does everybody follow me? They tend to come in pairs. When one of them breaks, it generally gives you I don't want to use the word trend because I just said in the Wednesday or Friday session, I don't really like the word trend, but it, it generally tends to show us where we're likely headed. If we, any pullback now, I would expect to be lower highs. I know this does look like the Wild West, but, I, but it's still a market. So we've zoomed. We should be headed to the lower parallel or a retest. There's our retest. So maybe the median line's not crap because here's our zoom, here's our retest, and a turn. See it? Range extension. I like this. Range extension. Right? Come down. Don't make it to the parallel yet. We'll see. Leave a low. Would you ever consider trading the retest? Uh, yeah. Do I have a stop here, though? Hey, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, my stop's up here. Right, which is why, yeah, exactly. Everybody's got it. This is the stop. You can say anything you want, but there's only one stop. So where do I want to trade? I want to trade somewhere that either allows me to trade with a stop above ML3, or I need to build some structure. Now, if we build some structure, yeah, sure, I'll trade the retest. But we have to build some structure first. The other thing is, Am I really looking to trade down here at this point? I want a pendulum pullback, right? Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let's see what we get. So we're still, what day are we? Uh, we are on, we're on the third, coming up to the weekend. Plus the action reaction lines are working well, could be a turn, sure, absolutely. We retest that, okay. We bust through the first warning line. We bust through the reaction line. Uh, nope, it's not what I wanted. A 
About halfway through this bar, what do you think the positions are? Do you think there are people trying to pick some bottoms here? Then they got stopped out and some people got short thinking it was a new leg. Do you think everybody got hurt here? I don't think this was a pleasant bar for anybody. But if there are any positions, what positions do you think there are as this bar closes? Scared shorts. That's a good description. Well, I don't really like it, but I guess I'll be short. I, I guess I'll be short. Right. I think that's about right. So let's see what the scared shorts get for their trouble. Whoops. Whoops. Now we've I don't know I don't know what I don't know if we're zooming. Whatever whatever you want to call this. Yep, zoom. We should see a what? And I guess that would be the retest. I guess my all my bars are off here. But so you pretty much can feel that on this bar right here, the shorts got it, didn't they? If they weren't cleaned out, they're probably cleaned out now. There's our retest, and we're headed back higher. It is the so this is Friday. Zoom. What do you expect? Retest. Trying to get up, trying to get up, can't get up, not getting up. There's your retest. Man, oh man, oh man. Why is it this? It is point one. Yeah, there's our retest and another zoom here. These are just not coming out right. Okay, now what do you rec what do we expect again? It's endless, right? And if you're doing the statistics on this when Andrew says with 80% probability, if we zoom it, we're going to retest it. Think of last week and this week. Out of all the tests and retests, we must have looked at 10 or 11. There's only one time that we didn't get a retest, isn't it? The statistic holds up pretty well, doesn't it? Now, how you use that, you know, that's kind of up to you. That's where you have to put parameters around it. I can show you where price, the probable path of price is. That doesn't mean you're going to make money unless you put parameters around it, right? If I show you the probable path of price is down to here and you're short, well, you're going to get hurt right here, right? Because you're probably not going to be able to hold on. So you have to put parameters around it. you got to put money management. you got to put some logic into it like test and retest okay so we're coming into Friday afternoon we're sliding right into Friday afternoon and these people are just getting hurt they're just tripping all over themselves and 
That is the opening salvo on Monday the 6th. And we are actually in session. Everybody follow me? Okay. I tell the, the great bird just saying, what, 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 what do you want to do? I mean, you're about to go into session. And I told him, look, we got a meeting line. And we've got an action reaction line. If we get a test and a retest and you have a stop and we're, we're willing to use a point and a half take an entry now this one is only for my account it's not for the it's not for the four uh, sovereigns because this market I'm, I'm afraid this market's too thin I don't think I can do 10 to 15 billion dollars in this market but I you know I can do my own account and they can put it up on the on the 55 inch screen but i'm more interested in the canada trade in what's going on in the canada trade than i am this because i'm trading why do i say what rebecca depth you mean it's thin look at people getting hurt i, I the can the cash foreign exchange market is thousands of times bigger than any of these markets For example, on, on a typical day, by 11 o'clock in the morning, in, in Canada, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange has done $11 billion in business. In Canada, but not in natural gas. The cash market, and that's not what we're trading here, the cash market is huge. But you guys can't trade the cash market. I told you that I'd show you time-based bars and things that you could trade. I'm not going to show you the bullion market in gold because you can't trade it. I'm not going to show you the cash market in natural gas because you can't trade it. There's no point. I want to show you things that you can do in a fashion that you can do it. Okay? That makes sense? Rebecca, that work for you? So I've purposely changed. I'm not. Cha I'm not doing tick based, which I would do for my own account and for the boys and girls, because a lot of you guys don't have good tick data, or have no tick data, and you feel more comfortable with time based bars. Correct? Now I'm not so sure that you're that comfortable with market this market to begin with, but I'd like uh, my point was to show you even if I get stopped out you can trade this market in time based bars I know I showed it to you originally in tick based but you can you can you can do it in time based all right so we go into session we're in the midday session it's Monday the 6th same day as the Canada trade everybody with me there's the opening bar I've already talked to them. My screens are off. We're looking at uh, we're looking at somebody's uh, somebody's uh, trades. Remember last Monday, we were, we were finishing off our statistics, and I think I flashed the Canada ID at the end. But anyway, test. This is what the gray bar, gray beards are seeing. Test. Now we zoomed, we test, we retested, and there's their go no go that's a buck and a half long. Everybody see it? They're in. There's their stop. Now, they know this is, Tim, why didn't you take at point three the first test of the upper parallel? 
Um, I'm no, no. I'm not willing to trade till January sixth, Al. I'm I'm in Tucson. Kids go back to school on the sixth. I'm willing to trade. Okay. Oh, I, I, this was the pre mortem, so to speak. I might have considered this. I mean, it's really an extension of of this, right? This is very nice, except for one thing. What is it, Al? There is a problem with this. No stop. This actually, because of the sell-off, becomes the stop for this. How about that, Al? You see that? This made a nice entry, with but there's no stop. But then we sell off. That leaves this as a stop for this test and retest. Does everybody get that? So price built me a hell of a stop. Now, okay. Al asked, why didn't I just trade here on this retest? Let's call it a retest, Petra. Why why not? Why wouldn't I trade there? Just Petra, why not? No stop, right? Now, the other truth is, I'm unwilling to trade on this day because I'm still in Tucson on vacation with my kids. They don't start until Monday, okay? Now, this is what happens on Friday. See this sell-off? That makes this a swing high, right? You see that, Petra? Okay, Petra? Okay, now... If we get back anywhere near up in this area, I can use this as a stop. Do you see that, Petra? Okay. So, it's now Monday. Now I'm free to trade. Now, right here, a couple bars before, about 20 minutes before the session, Remember the graybeards. There's a there's a screen up above, 55 inches. I can write on it. They can write on it. They can see what I'm doing. I'm talking to them on the phone, and I tell them, look. Well, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a test and retest in here, with a stop. And it's obviously not going to be on the action line because if it's up here, where's the next stop? It's all the way at ML3. But I built a nice little stop here. So if this, if you get a test or retest on this upper parallel, and you can afford it, so it's going to have to happen pretty quick. Go ahead and take the position. But I'm not going to be there to watch. Just go ahead and take it. Follow me? So while we were... Okay. So while we were looking at statistics, this is what happened. Test. Retest. Buck and a half stop. They take the position. See it? Any questions at this point? I got, I got my violence. I got my range extension. I got my frequency. Now I got my test and retest. I got my frequency several ways. If you didn't understand the center line and the action reaction line, you know what? You could have just done ML1, ML2, ML3. Everything I wanted, yep several different ways and I got hell I got a lot more pain than I thought I got pain up here I got pain down here and I got pain over there pitch pain everywhere so I think this is a skittish market that people really don't want to trade which is the perfect market if you can find what you want the test retest looks quite small bars so still bad doesn't matter to me Shane I don't care but I think they're small bars because at this point do you think people real after after this and this and the other one do you think people really want to trade That's that's when I want to trade, when the market is clean. Clean slate. People are afraid to trade. Well, if I get a high probability entry with frequency and a stop, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Lower price to sell. Yeah, I, I paid a price. Sure. I didn't trade up here. I might have been able to trade up here. 
But again, it's you know the end of 2013. I, but I know a heck of a lot more over here. The separation. Separation is, it, okay, we got to look at scale, guys. Three to five pips in the, nat, in the natural gas. Separation. High. Four, 437.8. Low. 436.8. So it's a buck. And the close was 437. So it's eight pips. Three to five is separation in the natural gas chain. You know, I know it doesn't look that, but that's because of the scale of what else has happened in these wide range bars when these people are getting shot in the butt. Follow me, Shane? The separation is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's more than three to five. And the beautiful retest. Now, they have discretion. I may override it later on, but they have discretion for a target. Let's take a look at, at, at what they're going to choose and what they may choose. There's our stop. It's 150 bucks, whatever. Yeah, it's pretty close. What if they just went to the median line? Even if the median line is 3 to 1, isn't it? If the retest had less separation, would that still be a good entry? Um, if we were under three pips, I, I would I would want more separation, Gary. So if we closed on our high, I'd want some separation. That that's part of what I told them. I mean, they have discretion, but I told them I want to test and retest, and I want some separation. Should have put that in the list, by the way. Somebody remind me to go back and add that. So at the median line, they got three to one going. Yeah, we're only risking 150, not 156, but that's great. What if we got the lower parallel? Well, we got 1,100 bucks risking 150. That's that's pretty good too, right? What if we get prior lows? Doesn't suck, right? So we've got nice open space here to work with, right? All right. So Mike knows that I got. I'm going to be in here for a couple hours. If your stop holds, then price should make a new low. Yeah, I agree, Shane. Mike, the guy who owns the Graybeards, makes a practical decision, and he says, "Here's what we're going to do." We'll put our profit stop in immediately right here at this low until Timmy gets out of his meeting. Until Timmy's done teaching. At that point, we'll reevaluate our stop. Does that make sense? And if he wants to go hunting for bigger bear, that's, that's his decision. It's still 9 to 1. Yeah, it doesn't suck. All right, so let's see what happens. And it is now um, 6.30, so we got another almost two hours. And nothing's happening. Okay. We're out now because I have to go to Dr. Gary's. We're actually out here. Okay, everybody with me? Session's over. Got to wash my face and hands. Go see Dr. Gary. I pick up the phone directly to the graybeard to get Michael. He goes, hey, boss, you're in. Puts up, flashes it up, flashes the Canada trade. I said, good, you know what to do. That was easy. There's nothing to do on that one. He goes, but, okay, what do you want to do in this natural gas thing? Because here's prior lows. I said, well... Let's let's look at it. What about the lower parallel? What about 
prior lows. He goes, man, that's a lot of money. I said, I think this is a market where we're probably the only ones. We're not taken out. Because think about this. This is a market where people didn't want to play. And we're at the position now where we're not taking out any. Until we take this out, there's not going to be breakout buyers or sellers. See, think about it. Look at this market. There's not going to be any breakout sellers. Here's the low. They're not going to start selling until here and here, right? This is where they're going to chase price, here and here. So in a certain sense, we're sneaking up on the on the breakout traders. Does anybody follow me? So I tell Michael, pull, the, pull this bid right away. And he says, well, you want to go for prior lows? I said, well, let's look at it real quick. I said, I don't have that much time, but let's look at it real quick. What do we have there? Well, we got prior lows, and we've got the warning line. No, it's not bad. But I got one other idea. What if... Yeah, I got time working for me. What if I what if I listen to Euclid again? Here's the range. Here's double the range. So here's my dictum to them. I got to go see Dr. Gary. Then I got to come back and teach again. Let's see if we can start boxing in profits and work our way toward this kind of target. Okay. If we get stopped out, we get stopped out. Make sense? Let's open this up. So we're looking at double the range as an ultimate target. But we'll see if we can box in profits as we go. All right. So let's. So down here, we'd be at 1700 bucks, but let, let's see what we get now. All right, so I'm going to Dr. Gary's. We got a lot of money in the bank. And let's see what happens. And they're just going to try and box in profits, just like we talked about on Friday and uh, Thursday. Just what I want you guys to keep practicing. If, if you're not going to just take your money off the table, there, this would be a great place to take your money off the table, as would this median line okay I mean you're down here at, you're at nine to one down here you're darn close to it nothing wrong with that right but if, if you want and you get the opportunity to protect profits go ahead and practice even, even if you've taken your prep your your uh, your money go back and practice because you can really stretch out Uh, when we zoom the median line, yep, you better be at break even. Let's, let me show you how much money you got in this. You, you've got 750 bucks, Big Sean. I think. Yeah, I think that's basically it. When you get to the median line, you got to go to break even. Yeah, I think that's about right. There's no other structural reason. I was thinking maybe these, this high, this low, straight across, that'd be another one. To be about a little over three to one, that or the median line, but somewhere in here, you got to go to break. You have to go to break even. Okay. So now we're. Price fluctuates. We know that. Let's say you're at break even, Ixon. Price fluctuates. You want price to move up. I know that sounds strange. You're short, but you want a pullback. Why do you want a pullback? To build a stop. 
we saw how it worked so nicely over here for the entry, right? We structure to build a stop, right? This is where patience comes in. And again, if you took your profit here, follow it through and see if you can watch it build a stop. And then when it breaks out of the downside, mark the downside, then you can move your stop, right? So we've left a high. We're working our way. We're getting darn close down here. Again, if you want to take your profit down here, it's a hell of a lot of money. Now, it's like, I don't know, 1100 bucks. If you want to take your money down here, which is also the lower parallel, I don't think that's a bad idea. Do you? Really? And it's a day trade, by the way. That's a pretty nice day trade, right? I got no problem with that. Okay, you could take 1100 bucks right now. That's pretty damn nice. We're in the midday session right now. We bust through. When we bust through, it's simple. Look at the average true range. It actually needs to be, they've got 15 pips. It needs to be 18, but you get it, right? You get your stop above this high. Or you can take your 1100 bucks. Either way. Doesn't matter. John, you, you get what we're going to do, right? All right, take care, take, take care, John. We're just going to box in profits. So let's see what happens. We busted the lows. Now, again, we want it to pull back up so we can form structure and mark in some more and you can see we flatlined again so if you took your profit at 1100 bucks you missed all this which is probably enjoyable right you don't have to look at it me I don't have to look at it anyway we swing right back to the median line wouldn't this be a perfect place for price to run out of directional energy? Yes. Well, secondary entry, where's your stop? If you want to re-enter, well, I guess so. Yeah. If you took your money and you want to re-enter, I don't want to add, but slid right into the median line. Sure, it's beautiful. Let's see what happens now. Yeah. Let's say you take let's say you took your money here. Sure, why not? Stop above here. All right, let's see what happens. Look at the next day. The opening of the next day. Welcome to heaven, huh? Like I said, that Andrew guy, he's not too, he's not too stupid, is he? Price should run out of direction energy. It does. We zoom the median line. We're going from red to red to red. So we can box in profits here now. Now, if you re-entered here, you're smarter than I am. How about that? If you took your money here and re-entered here, wow. All right, let's see what happens. At the moment, this is the high. As weird as that sounds, look at this run. Okay, we start to leave a low. Trying to pull back here now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know. I'll have to go back and check. Looks like a mighty short Wednesday, doesn't it? 
If you were the wrong way around, would that mean you stopped at the open or had a chance? No. Well, it, Shane, it depends on how you left your order. Hopefully, you would leave your order 24 hours and you wouldn't have got stopped out down there. You were correct. I doubt that. I mean, there are often gaps in natural gas, but I doubt that that was the overnight open. But it could be, especially on a sin, on a Sunday. But kind of, I'll go back and take a look. But you know, on your own chart, go back and fill it in. But you, and Connor, you know my stance: trade what you have, right? Because I had a trade on, I don't refresh data. Once I have a trade on. I never refresh data. Can I say that again? Once I have a trade on in a market, I never hit refresh. I trade what's in front of me. What if I'm in the middle of a trade and I hit refresh and it changes my frequencies and my pictures? I'm screwed. At that point, I might as well just close everything and walk away. If I got a trade and it's working, I'm not going to refresh data. I'll look at it afterwards, but I'm going to trade what's in front of me, what I see. Okay? And yeah, I see, I see it now, and I go, huh, that's a pretty weird Wednesday. I wonder if they took half the day off. D doubtful. It's not like eggs where they can decide whether or not to trade. All right, so we've got a low, and we've got, where the hell is our high? Here's our high. And you can see we got pretty close to our high. We got within a half a point of our high. So we've got a high and a low boxed in. And we're short at 440 seven or something so we're doing pretty good right testing the low through the low there we go just boxing your profit see it now we got 26 cents boxed in anybody 26 cents is 2,600 bucks. That's pretty good, huh? Can I squeeze out? Sure. There's, man, by the way, our one, two, three drives to the top held. Our three drives to the bottom got busted. Is that enough, Al, or you need more? Okay. Look at the gap lower. We come back and try and fill it. Cannot blow through the bottom that's formed. Let's just just to remind ourselves. If the world ends, we've got eighteen hundred bucks locked up here. Okay, Gary, I'm gonna see you in about less than an hour. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. So if we get stopped out, we got 1800 bucks locked in here. Okay? That's great. Let's see if we can squeeze some more. I'm not trying to be a pig, but, you know, I got I got a couple things going for me. I've got um, Euclid. I've got my action-reaction lines. And I've got warning lines Andrew's warning lines right everybody follow anybody got any questions before we keep going this part is a lot like the Canada trade right in a certain sense this is the hardest part of the trading which is you are just taking care of business right you're following the plan you're not getting itchy You're, you're taking care of risk reward. You're taking care of money management. This is really just A, B, C, right? A equals B, B plus C equals D, right? Does that make sense? And the hard part is to go, oh, right, okay, I got that. It's time to do this. Oh, okay, right, I got that. It's time to do this. And to not blow it, to just keep doing that. Don't think. When it starts to pull back like this, the hard part is is to go, is to remember. Oh yeah, that's what I want. 
not to go, well, maybe the bottom's in. Because this is how you shag yourself out of positions. If you've decided to trail stops, this is how you shag yourself out of positions. Does that make sense? So you got to keep the plan in front of you and remember it. And practice boxing in stops and say, okay, what's, what's my ultimate target look like? And until I, I get there, I've got a lot more than I ever thought I was going to get. So let me just keep boxing them in. And I'll either get to my ultimate target or I'll get stopped out. And like I said, if I got stopped out here, it's 1800 bucks. It's not so bad. So let's see what we get. Okay, run into new lows. Now I want a pullback. As stupid as that sounds, this is why you have to practice it. I want a pullback. Please give me a pullback because then I can lock in more profits, right? Make sense? Now, the further we go, the closer we're going to trade we're the closer we're going to put our stops to the market because we're going to have more and more money in the bank. Does that make sense? We're going to be less and less willing to give away large amounts because our risk reward is going to be upside down. Because we do have ultimate targets. Can you follow me? So we may not be willing to be this close. Yeah, we might not have tight, tight stops early on other than our original entry. But as we get closer toward the end potential end game, our, our profit stops might get tighter. Even if there's no structure. Well, we're going to have, Ikshan, we're only going to put profit stocks at structure, if that's what you're asking me. So it's got to be here. It can't be any tighter than here, right? But we are going to have a profit target based off of something. And, and we've already talked about doubling the range and maybe something off of action reaction. But we're just going to keep looking for structure just what you asked so we've left a low and in a weird way we want it to pull back this is where we have to keep our patience and keep our conviction we want the market to go against us that's okay with us now look at this pullback it ain't much see it Euclid says that 50% becomes 100%. And where the hell is our Euclid line? All right, hang on, our Euclid line is missing. Just a minute. I screwed something up. Vaguely remember that it's something like 63 or something. Yeah. 63, 64, 65. There's, okay, here's our range. Here's double the range. That's Euclid line, okay? Everybody see it? So we should have that on the map. I don't know why it didn't pop up, but anyway, we should have that on the map, but we should be saying, we said at the beginning, hey, what if it doubled the range? Well, we're pretty close to that, aren't we? So we're willing to box in tight now because we're we're in an area where price could turn on a dime on us. We've also got our second warning line, that's the dot the dash line. And we've got our action line, our reaction line, and here's our double the reaction line. See that? See where it comes in? So we've got a lot going on right here. Does everybody see that? I got nobody answering. There we go. So now how you deal with this is up to you. 
But what did we type yesterday? What what did the what did the graybeards type to me on Thursday or Friday? Pigs get slaughtered, right? It is to the point where the market probably is starting to understand that this thing is in a big downtrend. This this doesn't look like much, does it? Does this look like a downtrend or uptrend or anything? Unless you had the slope lines. This doesn't, no. Does this look like anything, though? It looks like kind of like nothing, though. But when this happens, hey, wait a second. I mean, people start to get it. They're selling this low, right? They're starting to get on board now. And once people get it, remember, I wanted to trade when nobody got it. Now people are getting short and they're getting paid for being short. Once everybody starts to get it, I really don't want to trade anymore until they, do I? Yeah, until that happened, it may have looked like a range. The top looks more like a range, right. But now it looks like a, I don't want to use the word trend, but the, do, the flow is down, right? The three drives to the bottom of the broker paying off and people get it. And at the beginning, when nobody wanted to be long or short, we said, what about double the range for, for Luca, Euclid? Well, where are we? And people are getting it. I don't want to, when everybody else gets it, I really don't want to play. So I tighten my stop. I screw my top, my stop down as tight as possible. See it? You take out one, just take, just take out the one swing. I'm, I'm walking away. And even if that happens, let's look real quick. Even if that happens, I'm risking 150. I'm taking out 2,800 bucks. It's not bad. Yeah, right? So, as we come down here, I've got frequency, which is the second warning line. I've got frequency, which is the second reaction line. And I've got double the range with you with Euclid, right? Choose your poison. You got to take pre somewhere in here. There's my Euclid line right there. I don't know why it didn't pop up. I'll, I'll get rid of the gray now. So it just looks prettier. You got to take your profit somewhere between here and here. And doesn't matter. And it's starting to look like a whoosh. People are getting it. People are getting short and short and shorter and shorter. What are the positions here right now? In fact, let's do that. They're all happy shorts. What happens to happy shorts? It's going to zero, right? Happy shorts become unhappy shorts. They get whacked. So let's take our money. The gray, the gray beards pick the... They went with the median line because it got us in. I was at dinner. Well, let's look. Thirty-six hundred bucks. Do you really want an OL? Thousand. I'm shocked they got that many off. Be honest. They asked a broker on the floor for a price on large, and the guy made him one. Which I don't know. Nitwit, I guess. Mike, Mike, you know what? There's a lot of people on the floor that owe Mike favor, so maybe that's why we got the. I don't know. Anyway, what are the positions? They're short. 
we got frequency going for us. We got Euclid going for us. We've got action reaction going for us. Let's see what happens to price. Ready? We're out. Plenty of time to get out. Right? He had an hour and a half to get out. Didn't it didn't go anywhere. Everybody's short and they're happy being short. You see, we, for quite a while, we wouldn't have got stopped out. In fact, I guess they probably could have left. If we make a new low, I guess they could probably do this. But let's see what happens. I don't even know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we make a new low. This would be our new profit stop. It's not bad. We got out at uh, 402. 406, not bad. Making new lows. So everybody's getting paid. It's a beautiful thing. I love entrepreneurs. I love I love being a speculator. Everybody gets paid to be short. Or is that really a new low according to the concepts we learned early in this session? Is it? I don't know. We'll find out in one second, won't we? Oops. Oops. The collar's getting a little tight. Stopped. Oh, four dimensional? No, it's not. We're not making new lows. No. You're right, Timmy. Good good point. In the fourth dimension we're basically static. And now, gone, gone. So, I don't, you you wouldn't get short until somewhere down in here. I mean, maybe you're at, maybe you got out of break even, but that, these are the rats leaving the ship. There you go. Eee, that's live. Questions? Yeah, the lines worked out pretty good. The gray beard execution worked out even better. I know they're watching here. Did the Greybeards let it go? Five hundred. I looked at a couple of different data sources and went to 443 before going down. Uh, I'm happy for you. I'm a uh, Connor. I'm going to tell you one more time. I'm looking at what we traded off of. Now. I don't know about your data sources. I'm not going to vet your data sources. This is what we had live. You may be looking at pre-market, buddy. I, I can't tell you. But I can tell you this. After they got short, it didn't go 500 bucks against us. Okay? So, I'm not even going to... I'm not even going to go there. Let me Let me just type it in, okay? You guys see that? I can't see that. There it goes. I have no idea what you're looking at, and, and it's meaningless to me. Okay? 
It doesn't mean anything to me. I know the orders. I know the orders that were in the market. I know we didn't get filled. They were in the exchange. And the exchange has an audit. That means the two bars that we have didn't go there. At least not during the exchange time. I don't know what times you're looking at. It's meaningless to me. It's not the point anyway. Here's the question. Let me ask this, Connor, and I'm not trying to be mean, but let me just ask you a question. Are you here to vet my trading, or are you here to learn how to trade? Okay, if you're here to learn, pay attention to what I just did and see if you can recreate it. First, as a sim trade, and second, is that this? No. And second, See if you can recreate it. There we go. See if you can recreate it and start to trade a real with small. Okay? You're trying to look through my eyes. That's that's what you're here for. You you know what? My investors have the money in their pocket. That's so you know, if you if you're here to I I don't get it, okay? I don't. You mentioned once that modified shift lines tend to perform better on cash FX. Yep. So standard media lines work better on futures because you eliminate some of the overnight sideways moves rather than with 24-hour market. I can see that two and three would be a modified shift A and C. I wouldn't be against, um, Shane, I wouldn't be against trying to modify shift. It's just that, um, remember, I told them, you know, this is likely to just plow into this line as I go into the meeting. So I didn't have any time to, to pardon my language, dick around. But, you know, if we hadn't tested here, I probably would have modified shift immediately to take a look. But, you know, I was like running for cover, so to speak. Follow me? But I get your point. So you're saying that that two and three could be the modified shift A and C. Two and three. Well, let's look. Let's look at the modified shift. I don't follow. I don't follow. See what I like about what I like about the traditional traditional median line here is exactly this. That, then I'll go back. Hang on one second, Shane. What I what I like specifically about this median line is that we swung up here and left this swing high at this median line by pulling back down then came back up and could use it as a stop it fits price I'm not going to go hunting for media lines so are you asking me this maybe you're asking me this are you asking me this like that is that what you're asking me That's that's fine. It's another way to get to the same area. I that's fine. Look, I you get to this you get to the area by the action line off of the reaction line. You get to the area by the upper parallel, and you get to the you could get there sure by let's make it. We'll call the Shane's median line. Yeah, I'd be I'd be fine with that. And you know, if you want to draw, the other thing I'd say to you, if you want to draw more than two, 
or more than one, I, it's fine. That's really, it carries the frequency great. Let's see what it does on the downside. How about that? It even gives you Euclid. Shane? Hang on, Rebecca. Shane, it even gives you Euclid. I mean, even the, just the, just the, I mean, and not only that, you're, you see your median line is better than me. It even gives us the top when it pulls back. I mean, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, Rebecca says, if you go back to the original action reaction set drawn, the pullback to the upper median line of the red fork represents a big, nasty double failure. Yes, it does, right here. Ah! Which is, that's also like why I like ML2. As long as the trade setup has logic, structure present an affordable stop, then I suppose there's more than one way to get to the setup. Yeah, I mean, I think all lines point to this area for profit and there's probably three or four or five ways to get to this area to get short as long as you're not already dead from these days and you're not already committed and trying to defend a position right it's a good eyes Shane I like that medium I'm to go back and study it myself very nice. So, any other questions? Connor, do you get my point? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to tell you, there's no such thing as perfect data, so I don't really care. I know what's in the account, so I don't really care. It's, you know, I just don't care. It's meaningless to me. We'd have to go back and look at what time that your bars were starting and whose data was better and all kinds of things. There's no point. It doesn't matter. You, you trade off of what you're trading. That's all. So... Last questions. Otherwise, I'm gonna. I got to go see Dr. Gary. Yahoo! It's pretty cool having him here live, huh? When he gets a little more um, acclimated, he's very insightful. He's uh, he thinks like a physicist. And uh, oh, no problem. No, nah, Timmy, no problem. You know, just watch the tape. Timmy got a new computer. Yahoo! So, um, hopefully Gary will add to the, uh, to the chemistry. Because we, I, since we've started uh, offering recordings, six or seven people have decided that, you know, they'd rather just sleep in. Which I get, you know, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I get that part. But, I don't know, Shane, you're, it's pretty late where you are, right? Eleven PM. Wouldn't you rather see it live? So you can ask questions and be a part and say, Hey, what about this what about a modified shift here? Or why why didn't you accept an entry here, etc.? I, I would think live would be more better. But I mean if if you can't for the time change okay, I get it. That's that's why we decided to offer recordings. But uh I've done both due to health reasons, and live is much better. Yeah. Well, I'd like I'd like to phone it in, but I can't. <laughs> I have so many questions on the midday session, but it's 2:30 a.m. Yeah. Well, hopefully you can you can get them out here. Hopefully we can deal with them here. So. Um, and maybe when the forum's better, um, you know, I'm thinking this forum's probably about two months away. Uh, it'll, and it's supposed to be a lot more friendly for Shane and I. Maybe we, we will answer a lot more questions on the forum. So anyway, this one I was pretty hands-off because I was more concerned about the Canada. Funny thing is, I think I made more money on this than the Canada. I just couldn't get the the big boys in. See, because I can't do 
40, 50, 60,000 contracts, unfortunately. Especially not early in the year. Later on, occasionally, we can sneak them in. But All right, so um, it's Monday. Welcome to breakfast. See all you guys uh, Thursday. Have a good uh, afternoon. I'll see a lot of you at midday. All right. Take care. Get some sleep, Shane.